Good morning and welcome on this Wednesday of Holy Week, Spy Wednesday as it is sometimes known because it is the day that Judas went to spy out an opportunity to betray Jesus. Those of you who have been here on past Wednesdays will know that it's been our practice in Lent to have midday prayer. But today we have something a bit special. Maureen is going to lead us in Stations of the Cross. I trust you have all got a copy of the order, but it just follows on. If you could join in with the words in bold, that would be lovely. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the words. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Almighty God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, Grant that, that we, we may follow the example of his patience and humility, and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. May I just explain that what I propose to do is introduce each scene as it comes, and then Kathy will read the relevant Bible verses, verse or verses, and then we'll have a few moments of reflection and perhaps a, a moment of silence, and then we all say together, we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, Maureen, because you by your holy me. cross you have redeemed the world. Can we just check that everyone can hear Maureen? Uh, is the microphone on, Mark? Yes. Mine is. <laughs> I'll just put it on. Yes. I can see some people just doing this. So. Yes. That's, that, better. that's better. That's much better. Thank you. So, did you get that? I'm, uh, I'm going to introduce it. Kathy is going to read the Bible verse relevant, and then we'll have a moment of reflection, and then you join together in saying, we adore you, O Christ. The first scene is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mark chapter 14. They came to a plot of land called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. Then he took Peter and James and John with him, and he began to feel dismay and anguish. And he said to them, my soul is deeply sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and stay awake. And going on a little further, he began falling to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, this hour might pass away from him. And he said, Abba, Father, for you everything is possible. Take this cup away from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. The story begins in a garden, Gethsemane. It is night time, but the full moon of Passover is shining. The air is cool. There's a strong scent of earth and plants and night sounds. Birdsong, scuffling in the undergrowth. Jesus and his friends have gone there after their emotionally high-charged supper. Jesus feels isolated. Even now, his friends don't understand his situation. He knows what the immediate future holds. He wants to be alone with his father. Jesus takes his close friends to a secluded corner. Stay there, he says. Stay awake and pray for me. He walks on. 
He knows what his father wants him to do. But he is human, fully human. He feels desperate fear and terror. His demons of the wilderness have reappeared. Do they offer escape? But Jesus knows God's will for him. He must go through with it. He goes to find his friends. He finds them asleep. He is alone, but he will do God's will. Are we asleep? Do we support people when they need it? Is our faith strong enough? We adore you, O Christ, and, and we, we bless, bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Our next scene is Jesus judged by Pilate. Mark chapter 15. Pilate asked the crowd, What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, anxious to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after having Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Here, the scene is the courtyard of Pilate's palace. Dawn is breaking. A crowd has gathered. Jesus has been arrested and has spent the night in the court of the Jewish authorities. A kangaroo court, conflicting evidence. Never mind, they want a death penalty. So they hand Jesus to the Roman authorities. Pilate is fairly dispassionate, quite sympathetic to Jesus. He has power to release him. But what about the crowd? They want Pilate to release Barabbas, a criminal, and they get angry. Pilate is afraid. He doesn't want a riot. His life or his career might be in danger. He gives way to the crowd and denies responsibility for the death of Jesus. It is another example of injustice, of which there are so many in our world today. Are we, should we be concerned about injustice, inequalities, abuse, discrimination? Do we pray for an end to them? And do we do anything about them? We adore you, O Christ, and, and we, we bless you, you because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The next scene is Jesus taking the cross. Mark chapter 15. When they had mocked him, they took off the purple, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. Jesus is taken down to the guardroom, a dark, hard, smelly, threatening place. The garrison are bored with local religious rivalries and careless of injustice. They play childish games, dressing Jesus in a purple cloak and a crown of thorns. They humiliate him, mock him, cause him serious physical and mental pain. They don't care, they have a job to do. They tie the crossbar onto Jesus and push him out into the street, crowded with people. Some bystanders may feel sorry for him, most are not interested, or see him as a criminal getting his deserts. Jesus has been up all night. He's lost blood. Now he has to bear the weight of the cross, and the splinters in it. 
We see and hear a lot about unjustified violence these days by government authorities, by street gangs, by individuals behind closed doors. We pray for all victims of violence. And we pray for peace in our time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The next scene is Simon of Cyrene helping Jesus to carry the cross. Again, Mark chapter 15. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming from the country to carry his cross. Jesus carries his cross through the crowded streets. It is early in the day, but the sun is hot, the street is stony, and the cross is heavy. Pain and exhaustion slow his journey. He stumbles. The soldier's job is to get him to Golgotha, so they grab a man in the crowd to support him. The man is a North African, a visitor, with no connection with Jesus. How did he feel about it? Willing or unwilling, he had to comply, and yet his involvement with Jesus must have sown a seed as his sons were apparently part of the Christian community. How do we react to a sudden plea for help, a sudden demand for help? Do we find an excuse or do something? We adore you, O Christ, and, and we, we bless, bless you. you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The next scene is, Jesus is crucified. Again, Mark chapter 15. Then they crucified him and shared out his clothes by casting lots to decide what each should take. At last, Jesus arrives at Golgotha. It is still quite early in the morning, but the sun beats down. The jostling crowds are left behind, but there are small groups standing near the victims, some supportive, some not. The soldiers are anxious to get their gruesome job done, untying ropes and substituting nails, and then hoisting the crossbar onto the upright. More violence and pain for Jesus to suffer, in addition to his existing weakness, exhaustion, sickness, breathlessness, suffered for our sake. A brutal and barbaric form of judicial murder, no mercy for the victim, and no painkillers. There is so much pain and misery in today's world, some avoidable, some not. But nowadays, there are remedies available. So as we pray for the sick, the disabled, the dying, especially anyone known to us personally, we thank God and pray for all carers and workers who are looking after them, all healers, and all who are involved in advances in medical science which promote healing. We adore you, O Christ, and, and we, we bless, bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The next scene is Jesus and the penitent thief. 
A reading from Luke chapter 23. One of the criminals hanging there jeered at him. Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But in reply, the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence? And we justly, for we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But this man did nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus' pain was not just physical. As he hung there, he had to endure further abuse and mockery from people standing around or walking past. Also from one of the criminals crucified beside him who wanted a miraculous escape. The criminal on his other side had a different story. He was sorry for his crime. He accepted his punishment and deplored the injustice done to Jesus. He asked him for forgiveness. Forgiveness was at the heart of Jesus' ministry, and despite his own situation, he gave it freely. Today you will be with me in paradise. The criminal's request, remember me when you come into your kingdom, is a message for us. It is never too late to ask for forgiveness. If we ask, we can be forgiven and healed. Jesus, remember me. We adore you, O Christ, and, and we bless, bless you, because, because by your holy, holy cross, cross you, you have redeemed Jesus. the world. The next scene is Jesus, his mother, and his friend. A reading from John chapter 19. Seeing his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. The hours pass slowly. Jesus hangs on the cross, drifting in and out of consciousness. He is isolated, alone, wanting support, needing support. Where are his friends? His disciples have vanished. They are frightened of arrest by the Romans. His women friends are there, but standing slightly at a distance, trying not to be visible. The only people brave enough to be at the foot of the cross are his mother Mary and his young friend John, our John the Evangelist, one of his special friends. There was nothing they could do for him now except pray for him. Jesus sees them standing together, and he's concerned for their welfare after his death. Each could benefit from the support of the other, so he commends them to one another. Even at that stage of his torture, Jesus thinks not of himself, but of other people, for them to have love and care and good relationships. Do we think enough about our responsibility to other people? Do we sometimes run away from people who need our support? Do we thank God for the relationships which he has given us and cherish them dearly?
We adore you, O Christ, and, and we, we bless, bless you. Because, because of your, your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The next scene is Jesus dies on the cross. From Luke chapter 23. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until mid-afternoon as the sun's light failed. The curtain of the temple was torn right down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. At three o'clock, Jesus is near death. The heat is intense and the sky has turned black and stormy. Jesus is praying the traditional prayers for the dying. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus has endured so much torment and pain and humiliation for us to give us eternal life. How can we show our gratitude that he's done all this for us? Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. We adore you, O Christ, and, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And then the final scene is Jesus is laid in the tomb. From Mark chapter 15. Joseph of Arimathea brought a linen cloth and taking Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the shroud, laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock, and rolled a stone against the doorway of the tomb. Our way of the cross began in a garden. Now, 24 hours later, we are in another garden a garden with a tomb provided by one of Jesus' secret followers. He wanted to give him a decent, if hasty, burial. It was a tomb cut into the rock, cold, hard, solid rock. Everyone thought that was the end. But Jesus' burial marked his return to God his Father. Jesus, the man, is taking his rightful place with God. God, the rock of ages, celebrated in the Old Testament. This is not the end. We know this because of what happened two days later. And we thank God for it. We adore you, O Christ, and, and we bless, bless you, because by your holy cross you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. Christ is risen. And we say together, most merciful.